Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. My name is Erin and I'm so glad you joined me today. I have a really fun tutorial to show you. Um, I'm gonna show you how you can move around limbs, like arms and legs, um, in a photo using the Puppet Warp tool in Photoshop. So we're just gonna dive right in. Um, the first thing we want to do, I'm gonna use this stock photo that I found. Um, just for tutorial purposes, it's easiest with a white background, but the first step is to isolate the subject that you want to manipulate. So I'm going to do that by first double clicking on my background layer, and I'm just going to hit OK so that it turns into a layer instead of a background layer. It just means it's editable. And then I'm going to use my magic wand tool and I'm going to quickly select the entire white background and I'm going to hit delete because I don't want that there. I'm going to eventually put a different background on the image. So, And then I'm going to hit Control or Command D to deselect. And now we have an isolated image, no background. Um, next, you want to go to Edit and down to Puppet Warp. And what this is automatically going to do, you this is what you're going to see, is it's going to put a mesh, um, kind of a meshy grid over your subject so you know exactly what you're working with. And then you'll notice that your uh, mouse has turned into a little pin, like a push pin. That's because this push pin, we with the push pin, we are going to add anchor points to our um, grid or image and so that we can move things around. So when you click with your pin, you'll see that a little dot appears. And what you want to do is just kind of randomly click around your image in different areas. And just adding basic anchor points. So these dots, these anchor points, mean that you can click on an anchor point and move it, but then the wherever the other anchor points are stays still. So to move this arm, um, once you get your anchor points in, um, you can um, toggle your mesh on and off up here in the menu bar, and I'm going to turn it off just because it's a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. But now that I have some anchor points, I'm let's say that we want to raise the arms up instead of having them angled down. So I'm going to click on this anchor point at the end, and I'm going to just see, whoop, raise it up. Isn't that kind of cool? And I want to do the same over here. So I'm going to lift, and I'm going to lift, and I'm going to lift. There. So. Look at that, we just easily moved his arms from down, pointing downwards, to pointing upwards. And we can play around with his legs. His legs might be a little bit more complicated, because um, there's a bend there, but um, you can, to a certain point, adjust it. Probably not much we can do with this one, because it's going to start looking wonky. But as you can see, you can still manipulate it um, to a certain extent. So. That's the first way that you can use it. Um, I want to show you a second example, and we're going to use this image for that example. We are going to change the expression of his face, but we're going to use the same steps. We're going to double click and release our background layer. We are going to use the magic wand tool to select and delete the background. And let's get our mesh tool up here, or um, puppet warp. And you can toggle the grid on and off, however you choose. And what I want to do is I want to raise up this eyebrow. So he gives him kind of an inquisitive look. So I'm going to put an anchor point right in the middle. And then I'm going to just do some anchor points all around so that we are isolating just his eyebrow and nothing else moves. Um, and then I'm going to zoom in. Oh, I lost my anchor points. Okay, I lost my anchor points after I zoomed. So I'm just going to do this again. Uh, 
And then I'm going to click and drag on this one that's on his eyebrow. And I'm going to raise it. So, um, and then it's going to ask me to apply it. It's not going to actually save it or apply it until you tell it to. And then we can, I'm going to zoom out. And if we kind of toggle back and forth, you can see the difference. See how that just kind of gave him that hmm, inquisitive look? And you can do that to any part of the photo. So there's two examples on how to use the Puppet Warp tool to edit your photos. And don't forget, if you are wanting to dive in a little bit deeper into Photoshop, I have created the Ultimate, Resource, um, Ultimate Photoshop Resource Guide. There's a link below. Um, there's a link on your screen. Go ahead and check it out. There's over 100 free tutorials linked in this document, plus some free Photoshop templates um, and textures. There is a small cost to download it because I have it all organized for you, and all you have to do is click. So um, if you're ready to dive in deeper, go ahead and check that out. But thanks for joining me today, and until next time, have a great week.